Greetings one and all from the Second Age of Reason. This morning we're going to review the Independence Day, Declaration of Independence and Independence in general. Um, I've been trying to make this video for nearly a month now and because of battery issues and timing issues and whatever, I finally got to it today. So, here is the beginning of it. The speech that Frederick Douglass gave in 1852 regarding Independence Day and what it meant to somebody who was a member of the slave race at the time. And there was perfectly legal at that time in 1852. So he came up with quite a sassy speech, especially considering the times. So I'm going to read it here for a reference. Um, and I have a, a reply to it as well. So let's go over his speech. 1852, Frederick Douglass. Fellow citizens, pardon me and allow me to ask why am I called upon to speak here today? What have I or those I represent to do with national independence? Are the great principles of political freedom and natural justice embodied in that Declaration of Independence, are they extended to us? And am I, therefore, called upon to bring our humble offering to the national altar and to confess the benefits and express devout gratitude for the blessings resulting from your independence to us? What? to the American slave is your 4th of July. I answer, a day that reveals to him, more than any of the other days of the year, the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is the constant victim. To him, your celebration is a sham. Your boasted liberty and unholy license, your national greatness, swelling vanity, your sounds of rejoicing, are empty and heartless, your denunciation of tyrants, brass-fronted impudence, your shouts of liberty and equality, a hollow mockery, your prayers and hymns and your sermons and thanksgivings with all your religious parade and solemnity are to him a mere bombast, fraud, deception, impiety, and hypocrisy, a thin veil to cover up crimes which would disgrace a nation of savages. There is not a nation on earth guilty of practices more shocking and bloody than are the people of these United States at this very hour. Go and search wherever you will. Roam through all the monarchies and despotisms of the old world. Travel through South America. Search out every abuse. And when you have found the last, lay your facts side by side of the everyday practices of this nation. And you will say to me that for a revolting barbarity and shameless hypocrisy, America reigns without rival. So, those are quite biting words indeed. And I kind of could understand that given the frame of reference in that time. So my rebuttal or reply, and I kind of agreed with him on it, would be this, in, in, deference to the, in deference to the scourge of slavery, which the Civil War did not end but merely deprivatized via the 13th Amendment, so this is forwards like 15 years, what smidgen of abolition it pretends is further extinguished by the privatization of prisons in this 21st century, spitting in the eye of emancipation. Douglas' speech lays bare the hypocrisy which we still see centuries later draping the emperor in new Orwellian finery. Shall we let it stand and meditate or is future history inviting us to invent a better way? So mine's a little bit in anachronistic because it crosses a lot of time but the problem 
remains. And now for my Independence Day paragraph, I shall continue reading for your benefit. <clears throat> and I'm kind of referring back to a, an article I had read that the world's total debt is at $217 trillion. And that's quite astounding because it wonders if there's that much debt who is it owed to and where did all that money come from to make those loans but anyway Independence Day in reference to the Declaration of Independence bitter words have never been put to parchment and the ink still burns resolute the covenant between God and man the Constitution which some wave as a subpoena of rights and reigns on government is but a post-it note on the edifice of history. It can and has been amended, so it's mutable. It can swell and shrivel to political whims, but the Declaration is an immutable stake in the ground. Unfortunately, its deal ideals are smoke in the tornado of malicious debt mortgaging our liberty even the liberty of the entire planet on the balance sheets of the creditors the litany against the crown needs addenda a global insurrection against banker occupation the realization that a, the so-called debt is actually credit and money issued by the family of nations backed by labor channeled through the banks that exist on the trust of the people and the true patrons of government governance so the deal is you can never have your freedom as long as you have debt the creditors will always usurp your freedom with their bill of obligations to you to us to civilization and that's why independence may be a stake in the ground but in the long run they'll say hey that's just your independence from England and that's an over with issue closed not seeing the more generic thing about independence in general independence of nations from other nations independence of peoples from other peoples independence <clears throat> this is what the current left and right paradigm cannot abide that you could be independent on your own the right wants you dependent on corporations and on banks and the system the, <clears throat> the system of money to private interests the left wants you dependent on the government and its institutions and it seems that if anybody tries to go independent on their own without government and without business they are hated most of all <clears throat> so I'm urging you to look at your independence and put a new stake in the ground and make an addendum to the Declaration of Independence because I think it's going to be needed sooner rather than later this is the second age of reason and so until later We'll be seeing you.